Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. I hope you're enjoying this Sunday. Uh, this is the second Sunday the church is open. So be with our pastor and lift him up in prayer. If you remember last week, we studied about pride. Mm -hmm. We learned that God has given us all our abilities and therefore we should not feel prideful about our abilities, only the fact that God gave us the abilities and only through him are we able to accomplish anything. And we always need to give God the glory for whatever we do. We also learned about relationships. Daniel loved the Lord and he studied the scriptures and prayed daily. And as a result, he had complete confidence in no matter what situation he was in, that God would be there to support him. And then we learned about faith and we learned how strong Daniel's faith is. In this week, we're going to even see his faith tested more, and we'll see how he responds. So with that, would you lead us in prayer? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We pray that we use the time wisely. We pray that we teach effectively. We pray that we learn effectively, Lord. We pray that the church service goes well, Lord. And in all of this, we give you the glory and we give you praise for giving us the tools and the time and the opportunity and the talents to put together a worship service that we hope is pleasing to you, Lord. And that, that's what it's all about. It's about our worship. It's about our coming together for fellowship. But it's mostly about worshiping you and giving you praise and thanks for your many blessings, your protections, and for your love. We pray this in Jesus' name and say, Amen. Yeah. So we're going to go right into reading. And this is coming from Daniel 6. If you are able to curl up on somebody's lap and open up your Bible or open your Bible yourself or your tablet with your Bible on it and want to follow along, we're going to read chapter 6. And we're going to read some passages, but not all, but we'll tell you which ones we're reading. And then maybe after our lesson and maybe later today you could sit down with somebody and read the whole chapter or do it on your own if that's what you can do. So starting with verse 3, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge and no fault, because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. So these governors and satraps uh, came to before the king and said thus to king, King D Darius, live forever. They're always saying, telling the king to live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, the satraps, the counselors, the advisors, and counselors to counsel together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. What does that mean? Anyone who petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king. What they're saying that if anybody prays to any other entity ah. other than King Darius, they were going in the lion's den. And they did this because they knew Daniel's past history that he would not do it. And do you think that they were kind of jealous because King Darius made him kind of boss over everybody? They really were because yeah. uh, Daniel was so faithful. God blessed him in his work and in, in all his activities. And the more he blessed him, the greater his faith came. And so it was a big circle and it was amazing to watch Daniel's life. Now, we're talking about a time when he is in his senior years. 
what we call today a senior citizen, which I happen to be one of them. So he was probably around my age. We're going to keep reading verses 10, 11, and 12. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his, in his upper room with his window open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. The, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Haven't you not signed a, a statement that said, a law that said every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered, the, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So continuing in uh, verse 13, so they answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, for the decree that you have signed but makes the petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself mm -hmm. and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him and to labor till the going down of the sun to deliver him. This, then these men, continuing verse 15, excuse me. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So they talked him into making a law that says that nobody can worship anyone but the king. And then they watched, they followed Daniel, they spied on Daniel, and saw Daniel doing his prayers to his God. And the other thing this shows is, is that, in this case, King Darius liked to be praised. Now, we, we know by his actions that he is aware of Daniel's relationship to God Jehovah. And he respected that mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And just because of this, his desire to be worshipped by his people, he did not think his, the event through, or he would have never issued a decree, because he didn't think about Daniel or others who worship God Jehovah, that they would not bow down to it. No, he just thought, you guys have a really good idea. Everybody can praise me all the yeah, time. I'm make a king. Me a big I should, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, verse 16. The, so the king gave the command and brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. That is a big space with a bunch of lions in it. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. And in verse 18, now the king went to his palace and slept, spent the night fasting. And no musicians were brought before him. And also his sleep went with him, went from him. So he threw Daniel to the lions. And there's some real lions, really? probably hungry yeah. out lions. Sure. And, and the king almost, he almost prayed with Daniel. Not really, but he said, your king will deliver you. He respected the faith that Daniel had in God. And then he went back to his rooms and he didn't eat anything and he, he, he didn't want any entertainment. He didn't want to watch the musicians, which is what they did. And he couldn't sleep. Because he was very sad and concerned for Daniel's well-being. Right. So continuing on in verse 20, we read, And when he came to the den, he cried out, with a voice to Daniel, the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? And this is pretty amazing. This is a guy who, a few verses ago, signed a petition where everybody worshiped him and nobody else. He acknowledges 
the existence of the true God that understands the relationship between Daniel and the true God, but somehow he always just steps back a little. He doesn't fully commit to, to God Jehovah, and that's very sad. And then in 21, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. 22, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. And then we pick, uh, pick up in 24 and it says, and the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children's, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they came into the bottom of the den. So the lions killed all of those that were involved in this plot. Yeah, the guys who kind of stirred up the trouble and then spied on. In verse 26, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. These were the words of King Darius. Yeah, he is acknowledging who God Jehovah was. So while he may not bring himself to worship outright and publicly, he starts by observing Daniel, and he respects that relationship. He respects that God. And now he's giving a blessing, essentially, on Daniel, saying that he is the living God, and he's recognizing it out loud. We don't know what's in his heart, but we know what he's able to say from his mouth. He is saying that Daniel... The God that Daniel worships is the all-powerful being, living God, and that all should be in fear of him. And in fear is not like the shaking of the bones no. that we saw no. last week with Belzar. It is being having a deep, abiding respect for who God Jehovah is. That when we use the term fear in this regard, we are talking about deep, deep respect. Understanding that God is all-powerful, as we've seen through the book of Daniel, over and over and over again, rescuing men from a fiery furnace, making people strong when they've only been able to eat vegetables and water, a very small portion of a diet that they may be accustomed to. We've seen, we've seen God's deliverance to Daniel, and that's what he's seen. Now, King Darius... Was his kingdom a small little kingdom? Did he just have like a little tiny city? He, or No, he had half the Babylonian Empire. How many provinces or states or countries I think we think He about? was dividing the country into 120 provinces. And he was setting uh, governors over them. Mm -hmm. And the governors were reporting to three men. One of them being Daniel. But Daniel's efforts so out perform the other two he was considering putting all the country under Dan. So are we finding a little politics in the book of Daniel? We're finding what's called jealousy. I think we find jealousy and I think that we find it in lots of places. Jealousy today too in our government, in our schools, in our workplaces, hopefully not in our families, but it happens in families too. But we have to guard against it. We I do. Mean, we do. We I am sure you know somebody who excels in all the sports, maybe baseball, football, or reading or writing, whatever it may be, and you think, well, you know, I'm just, boy, I can't live up to that. And, you know, maybe I don't like him so much because they can do so well and I can't. That's being jealous and we don't want to be that way. It's, it's tempting. It's, it's tempting. 
But we want to try and fight that temptation. Yeah, because God gives us our talents, and he gives more to some, less to others. But that's God's decision. And we learn to have grace with whatever God gives us and what abilities he gives us if we excel in those, whatever they are and however limited or however great they are, then we are blessing God. So back to King Darius. When he found out, well, how, how did he react when he figured out or found out this new law that he had made, how it was going to impact Daniel? He was very concerned because he had a high regard for Daniel. Yeah, he was heartbroken. And he did not want to see Daniel uh, killed mm -hmm. and eaten, devoured by the lions. So he was very concerned. That's why he didn't eat that night. That's why he didn't have a party. And that's why he couldn't sleep. And, and, and when did he go check on Daniel? Oh, first thing in the morning. Probably at sunrise he Probably, was there. Yeah. Early in the morning. The Bible says early in the morning. And uh, he was greatly relieved when he saw that God protected Dan. And what happened to his advisors? Uh, I'm afraid they were dinner. For? The lions. They went into the lion's den without God's protection. Yeah. Without anyone's protection. That That's a kind of gruesome thought. But out of all of this, as King Darius has watched Daniel and Daniel has helped him when he has asked him for help and, and then this law and he had to throw him into the lion's den. What was the message from King Darius to all of his people at the end of all of this? To fear the living God of the Daniel worship. And that was, he was declaring that Daniel's God was the one true God and that all should fear and respect him. So when we look back, we, we can see these lessons that, and the theme I kind of think has people seeing what Daniel is doing. And Dan, what Daniel is doing is living by God's laws and God's commandments, and he's praying to God. So he's living in a way that we would maybe say that he's living in God's way or following the path God laid out for him. He's being obedient, yes? He's also laying out a path for us because we read that he prayed daily mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. He talked to God every day. Mm -hmm. He studied his word. And remember, he was in a foreign country and there were no uh, Jewish temples in uh, Babylon. So, but he stayed faithful to his God, he stayed faithful to the Word, and most importantly, he talked daily. To God. I know at least he prayed three times a day, and probably a lot more, but three formal times a day, and he did that from the day he was taken captive up until he died. So he kind of, he, he walked the talk. Walked the talk, absolutely. He lived what he believed. And that, that, that resulted in people respecting him. And the king giving him, two kings giving him more and more responsibility. Well, he, he served under several different kings and, and successfully under the kings that we've already studied about. Mm -hmm. We have him under three kings. We have him under Nebuchadnezzar. We have him on Belshazzar, and now we have him under Darius. I forgot Nebuchadnezzar, because I had trouble saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so we, he got the respect of these kings, but that was not, he recognized that that was God empowered. And every time, he mm -hmm. always gave the glory to God. And that's the lesson we need to take away. Mm -hmm. That if we are faithful to the Lord, he will be faithful to us. And that was his witness, wasn't it? It was. That was his evangelism. Mm -hmm. So when your mom asks you to do dishes, do a great job. Do a great job. Because you're doing it for God. Yeah. Right. So. Would you close us up in prayer? I will lead us in closing Thank you. prayer. Thank you. 
All right, our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today's message, and we thank you for the example that Daniel has set for us. And as we seek to learn to walk closer with you, Lord, um, constantly remind us to pray, to study your word, and that we should always remember that whatever we do in the world reflects on our relationship with you. The stronger our faith is, the more we commit our life to you, the better individual that we will be. And as we go, uh, whether it's going to school or participating in sports or going to work, if we always remember we're doing this to please you, Lord, and to bring honor to you. So help us to always remember that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a good week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.